Now we talk about the tangent plane and linear approximation. So first we take a step back. So go back to uh, good old y equals f of x. And what we've previously seen, if you have uh, that function at a point a comma b, we know that, first of all, we can zoom in on the graph to see a straight line, and that's called the tangent line. Uh, then if you calculate the derivative, uh, that will tell you the slope of that line and also give you, and you can use that to find the equation of the tangent line, which uh, in one notation could be y minus b equals derivative at that point f prime of a times x minus a. Um, so alternately, you could write that using function notation. Um, and so using function notation, you can say that this is the linear approximation uh, function. And then here we have the formula f of x is approximated by l of x, and that would be f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a. So again, those two formulas or those two equations are just the same thing, only one is using more function notation. Okay, now um, we sort of bring this up to date for our uh, multivariable functions z equals f of x, y. So now we'll be at the point a comma b comma c, and we're going to aim for the equivalent goal. So what does that mean? Well, we already know that we can zoom in on the graph to see a plane, and that plane is called the tangent plane. So we are now going to do two things. Number one, we're going to use derivatives to find the equation of the tangent plane. Further, we're going to make a function, which is a linear approximation, L of x, y, linear approximation of the original function. So in order, first let's find the equation of the tangent plane. So there are a couple different ways uh, to go about this. Um, I'm gonna sort of give the, the highlights of one or two different methods. So one way is to start with just saying, well, we know the equation of any plane. The equation of any plane, um, if it's going through the point, uh, say capital P equals lowercase a comma b comma c. And it's got a normal vector n, which is capital A, capital B, capital C. Then we know it has, from our work with planes, we know it has this equation. Big A times x minus a plus big B times y minus b plus big C times z minus c equals zero. Okay, so any plane must have this equation. Now let's shuffle it around to get this formula in a different format. So shuffling stuff around, renaming coefficients, the details are there in front of you, but what we wind up with is, right at the end here, z minus c equals m times x minus a plus n times y minus b. Now again, assume that we've got, that we're given the point uh, a comma b comma c. The only thing that remains is to find out what are those coefficients m and n. So to think about what those coefficients are, basically just consider the traces at that point. So the traces at that point, um, we know that these for this function, the, the slope in the x direction, uh, we can write it as df dx at the point AB. Um, and if you look at our formula for the plane, it's very clear that the slope in the x direction is m. So therefore, these two things must line up. So therefore, from the original function, df dx at the point AB must be m. Um, and then similarly for the y direction. So here's a more step-by-step, -step, slower explanation with a lot more details. Um, you can look at that at your leisure. But what I've said captures the essence of the idea. And then, like I said, similarly, we know that the slope in the y direction, which is f sub y at the point a, b, that must be equal to the coefficient n. So put that together, and we now know that the equation of the tangent plane 
uh, for our function z equals f of x, y uh, at the point a, b, c must be z minus c equals, and we know the first slope coefficient is f sub x at a, b, and then that's times x minus a, plus the y slope coefficient, so f sub y uh, at the point a, b, and times y minus b. So that is the formula for the linear approximation, uh, sorry, for the tangent plane. Um, and in particular, notice the similarity with the y equals f of x version for the equation of the tangent line. It's essentially the same thing, but since we're moving from two dimensions to three dimensions, there is an extra piece. So just a quick comment. So far, we've assumed that derivatives exist and tangent planes exist. What if it were otherwise? What would a surface look like so that partial derivatives do not exist and the tangent plane does not exist? Well, recall the one variable case, y equals f of x, in two dimensions and extend it to the two variables in three dimensions case. Three dimensions case. So in the former, a uh, point uh, is non-differentiable, a point on the graph is non-differentiable. If you zoom in and you do not see a line, for example, you might see a corner. So now uh, for z equals f of x, y, a point on the function is non-differentiable. If you zoom in and you do not see a plane. So what would that look like? You might see a corner or you might see an edge, like corner, think like a cone, or you might see an edge, think like a folded sheet of paper. Okay. So of course, that's theoretically possible. We're not going to concern ourselves with those scenarios. Okay, so we'll move on again, working with functions where derivatives do exist and tangent planes do exist. So let's work on our first problem. So find the equation of the tangent plane uh, for this shape, which happens to be a paraboloid, f of x, y equals 1 minus 0.1x squared minus 0.4y squared. And we are at the point. 1 comma 1 comma 0.5. Okay, so to write down the equation of the tangent plane, what is it that we need? We need the point that we're at, and we need the partial derivatives or the slopes at that point. So we already have a point, so all we need are the partial derivatives. So let's calculate those. df dx equals, the first and last term will just be uh, constants going to 0, so negative 0.2x. Um, and in particular, we need not just the df dx, but we need df dx at the point where we are. So... df dx at the point 1, 1, 0, 0.5, um, or since the function we could just write uh, 1, comma 1, uh, that equals plugging in negative 0.2x, which is 1, so that's just negative 0.2. Uh, and now we do, that was the next thought, and now we do the same thing. df dy equals negative 0. 0.8y, and we want that derivative or that slope at our point, and that's negative 0 0.8, and the y value is also 1, so you just get negative 0 0.8. And now that we have the point where we are and we have the partial derivatives, we can plug it into the formula and write down the formula for tangent plane. It's just z minus c, which is 0 0.5, equals the first rate, the x rate, which is negative 0 0.2. Extra marks, sorry about that. Negative 0 0.2 times x minus 1. And then plus negative, so I'll just write minus 0 0.8 times y, uh, that value is also 1, so times y minus 1. 
uh, and there's the formula for the tangent plane. Okay. So another example, find the equation of this tangent plane. Uh, f of xy equals 2x squared y plus x to the fourth y squared at the point 2 comma 3. Okay. So again, we need two things. We need the point and we need the, uh, the partial derivatives uh, at that point. Um, so one interesting thing for the point, we have our a value and our b value. We do not have our z value. So that we actually need to find. So f of 2 comma 3 equals 2, 2 squared times 3 plus 2 to the fourth, 3 squared. And that equals 168. So next we also need our partial derivatives. So df dx equals 4xy plus 4x cubed y squared. And now we need it at our particular point. So df dx at the point 2, 3, 4 times 2 times 3 plus 4, 2 cubed, 3 squared. And that equals 3, 12. Next, we need the uh, rate in the y direction. So df dy equals... 2x squared plus 2x to the fourth y. And then further, we need that at our specific point. So df dy at the point 2, 3, that equals 2, 2 squared plus 2 times 2 to the fourth times 3. And that works out to 104. So put this all together, we have our point, we have our um, partial derivatives at our point. And so we simply, now we have z minus, we found that our c value is 168, equals first rate, x rate 312, x minus 2, plus the quote-unquote y rate, 104, times y minus 3, and there's the formula for the tangent plane. Okay. So that is the idea behind the tangent plane uh, and also how you can calculate it. Next, we look at uh, an idea that we will see is related to linear approximation. We already have the uh, idea that it's related because we know that it's related in the y equals f of x case. We're going to approach it fresh in the z equals f of x, y case. So let's take a look. So the first way I want to get out of here uh, is first by thinking through an application uh, or a situation. So um, let's try to answer this realistic question. Suppose we're in the ocean uh, and we're taking surface temperatures. Um, so you can measure the temperature in the spot where we are at the moment. And suppose you get a reading of 68 degrees. So knowing that, what would be the best guess for the ocean temperature 30 meters away? Well, your best guess would have to be 68 degrees. Um, you don't have any other information uh, to use. Now, you wouldn't actually expect that to be exactly right. You imagine the temperature is probably changing. So... Suppose by taking other measurements around our spot, you could determine that the temperature is changing at a rate of 0.1 degrees per meter in the north direction and negative 0.2 degrees per meter to the east. So now we'll sort of progress to sort out 
how would you construct a best guess for the temperature at two spots? First of all, if the spot was 18 meters north. And second, if us uh, at a spot that's 15 meters north and 20 meters east. Um, and let's also, we'll also talk about why that should only be an approximation and not an exact value. So, oops, that gave me a T. Okay. So, for the first spot, 18 meters to the north. So, if the temperature is changing at 1, 0.1 degrees per meter to the north, then moving 18 meters north should change the temperature by. 0.1 degrees per meter times 18 meters, that's 1.8 degrees. So we expect the new temperature to be the original temperature at our spot 68 plus 1.8, so 69.8 degrees. That's for the first spot. What about the second spot? In B, um, you'd expect it to be 68 degrees for the, temp for the, the temperature where we are, then moving no 15 meters north, 0.1 degrees per meter times 15 meters, and then moving east, negative 0.2 degrees per meter times 20 meters. So that'd be 68 plus the second term, which would be 1.5, and then the third term, which would be minus 4. Put that all together, you get 65.5 degrees. Okay. Now, of course, these are going to be approximations because we've measured the rate sort of right around where we are, where we're swimming, where our boat is, whatever. And we have no guarantee that the rate of change is going to stay the same as we move out. So from here, the challenge would be, can we come up with a formula to predict the temperature at any spot? Assuming we know our original location, let's call that A comma B. And let's say that we know um, the rates of change in the northern direction and in the eastern direction. Well, so this all comes together into a formula. So again, as a reminder, uh, for linear approximation, the formula was f of x is approximated by the linear function l of x which is the original value at the point f of a plus the rate at that point f prime of a times x minus a. So now we consider the fact that we've got a rate in the uh, x direction, but we also have rates in the y direction. So putting that all together and making the logical extension of that formula, we get that our function f of xy is approximated by the linear function L of x, y, which is the value of the function at our starting point, f of a, b, plus the rate in the x direction, f sub x at the point a, b, times um, whatever we think our change, whatever our change might be, x minus a, plus the rate in the y direction, f sub y at our point a, b, times whatever we're changing by, which is y minus b. So writing down all those words again, it's as if we're saying our new z value is the initial z value plus the second term we can say is the change in z due to change in x. And then the third term can be described as the change in z due to change in y. And this makes sense if you go back to our calculation from the water temperature problem, it's going back to the last example. Our original, our initial value was 68. Then there was a change due to change in one direction, and that was plus 1.5, and then there was change in another direction. Um, and of course, the, the east direction and the north direction uh, are very um, poorly disguised metaphors for the x direction and the y direction. So we can give each of these three terms a name. So our initial value we've been calling C, 
Um, some people would call it z, z sub zero. That notation is fine as well. And then the change in z due to change in x. Um, we can't call it delta z because that's all of the change in z. So to indicate that we want specifically the change in z just from how x is changing, delta sub x of z. Uh, and similarly, the change in z due to change in y, we call delta sub y of z. And that's all going to give us our new z value. Now, uh, how can we use this uh, function for linear approximation? So note that if you have a function which is a linear function and the graph is a plane, the rates are not changing and the function is a plane, so therefore slopes are constant and this calculation would, would be exact. If it's a nonlinear function, this calculation, this calculation would be an approximation because slopes are changing our rates are changing, but we used constants. So let's take a look at how we would use this formula uh, to calculate in an example. Okay, so here's our function. For f of x, y equals x cubed plus 2y plus 3. Um, we know that we're going to need to find our initial value, so that's f of 3 comma 2. And then we're going to talk about the value of the function at um, the point 3.2 uh, point point and 2.1. First, we're going to do a linear approximation, um, and then finally we're going to find it exactly. So, uh, first we need our original value. So our original value the function value at the point 3 comma 2 plug it all in and we get 34 okay next we are going to need the rates So the rates are going to be the FDX, which is 3x squared. Everything else is a constant uh, in, this, in this instance, so the derivative is 0. And now a little shorthand notation. At the point 3 comma 2, plug in 3 and you get 27. Our other derivative, partial derivative dfdy, uh, that's just 2. So of course plugging in any, so it's always 2, so any value we like at any, so at our point or at any point, that rate will just be 2. Okay. So now let us construct our linear approximation function. So we know that, so just keeping this in mind, we know that our function is approximated by this linear function, and now let's write it down. So the general formula is the function at AB plus f sub x at the point a b times x minus a plus f sub y at the point a b times y minus b. So now let's plug in and see what that gives us. So this will be our original value f of a b is 34 plus uh, f sub x at the point a b that value was 27 x minus a is just x minus 3 plus f sub y at our point was 2 times y minus, ah, oh, y value is 2. So times y minus 2. 
So this, just to write it clearly, is our linear approximation function. Okay, so now let's use that to estimate uh, the value at the point. So f of 3.2, 2.1 is approximated by L of 3.2, 2.1. And what's that? 34 plus 27 times 3.2 minus 3 plus 2 times 2.1 minus 2. So all that works out to be... Let's just, let's just do the calculation now. 27 times 0.2 plus 2 times 0 0.1 plus 34 plus, that's 5.4 plus 0 0.2. 34 plus 5.6 and that's 39.2. Um, so let's just uh, quickly do part C before I want to actually first let's carefully analyze this calculation here you might say well I just could have from the original line I could have just punched that into a calculator and quickly skipped a couple steps and gotten 39.6 I want to point out what each of these values means so in the second line here uh, we had just calculated 0 0.2 and 0 0.1. What do those numbers represent? Well, we were at an original va x value of 3. We went to a new va uh, x value of 3.2. So that is just delta x. And similarly, when we calculated 2.1 minus 2, that was delta y. Next, we calculated uh, 27 times 0 0.2 was 5.4. What was that? That entire term is going to be the change in z due to the change in x. In other words, that is delta sub x of z. And similarly, uh, 2 times 0 0.1, which gave us 0 0.2, that was the change in z, um, but that part is uh, what's due to the change in y. So that is delta sub y of z. Now, of course, if we combine those, we get the entire change in Z. And that was 5.6. And then, of course, we get our new Z value, which is 39.6. So each of the numbers calculated in every single step actually has some kind of meaning relative to our function and our scenario. Okay, so finally, put it all together, uh, or I should say compare with what the exact value is. The exact value, f of 3.2 comma 2.1, well that's just 3.2 cubed plus 2 times 2.1 plus 3, work it all out, blah, 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 you get 39 0.968. Um, so our approximation was 39.6. Uh, that's reasonable. It's not perfect, but it's a reasonable approximation. Okay. So that is how we can take a function and construct a linear approximation. Uh, function z equals f of xy. So finally, we talked first about the tangent plane, and then we talked about, uh, which we think of really geometrically, although we described it with a formula, 
And then we talked about linear approximation, which really drew out of sort of grew out of a applied situation, but eventually we described it also with a formula. So in case you didn't notice, these, I'm going to skip this other example, apologies. In case you didn't notice, these two formulas are really, really closely related. In fact, if you look at these formulas, the one for uh, L of XY and the other for the tangent plane. Uh, for our function at the point a comma b, uh, if you look at these formulas, you'll notice that they're basically uh, they're effectively equivalent. All you have to really do is take your original value, which in one case we wrote as c, in the other case we wrote as f of a b, and just put it on different sides of the equation. So mathematically, these two formulas are equivalent. Um, we might call them different things again, just based on the context, in other words, how the question essentially or the situation is being described.